Um, okay, China bends, you're gonna do some tip bar work. Um, and we're gonna talk, talk dirty. Oh, there'll be some grunting. Ah, absolutely. Yeah. So, what's the first topic of conversation, Duncan, Dunky D? Uh, motivation. Cool. I think. Yeah. So, so go. what do you find happens, well, let's start with you and your own training. What yeah. happens when you kind of, your motivation starts to dwindle? That's a good question, actually. Because I've really struggled with this the last few years through owning a business and starting a family. Um, it's really been a struggle to nail it on down, I think. Your priorities kind of start to get dynamic and shift, don't they? Yeah, they do. And I, look, to be honest, most of it's just tired. <coughs> it's just tiredness. Like, I'd be happy to... Um, you know, can have some continuity with my training and do work towards all these other goals. But, <laughs> you know, as you know, like, being sleep deprived just yep. kills all motivation. So prioritizing sleep is probably right up there. Yep. Uh, there's not much you can do with three young kids when they're up, but there's elements that I can do to it. So, you know, getting outside first thing in the morning starts your circadian rhythm. So yep. Moment. Direct sunlight. Yeah, direct sunlight. So the moment the sun's coming up around quarter to seven, so I'll try and get outside for two minutes as soon as the sun comes up. Yeah, nice. In between clients or, yeah, just whenever I can. Yeah, it's a big one. That's a, that's a really big one, yeah. And then on the other end of it is not having any light past 10 p.m. Yeah. So uh, what do you do in terms of... Um, uh, so I have an eye mask to... Yeah. Keep me, keep it, keep it dark in my room because a blackout blind wasn't, wasn't appropriate or possible. Yep. Did you, um, do you do anything in terms of like, you said no, no lights past 10 p.m. Do you lower your larger kind of lighting environment before then in the evening as well? I wear blue blocker glasses. I have dimmed lights and I start, I turn my phone off at 8 p.m. Solid. Turn the Wi-Fi off when I go to bed. Yeah, it's great. Um, I've actually got a timer in my house. Uh, yeah, nice. Which is really kind of unnecessary because all you need to do is go turn up to your Wi-Fi and turn it off. Turn it off, yeah. Um, but no, it still saves you from forgetting, doesn't it? <coughs> yeah. Um, and then, yeah, so light in the morning and cold exposure. Um, is really... In a nutshell, on a probably sort of more meta level, I think there's real power to having a purpose, to understanding like why you're doing what you're doing. Yep, yeah. Not, not just why is that I'm training, but what am I aiming for? Sure. You know, in five years' time, where do I want to be as a human being? Yeah. Not just as... Um, you know, in the gym uh, or physically, but where does my, what does my life look like? And if I can then combine um, what I'm doing in the gym with, as part of my purpose, when motivation goes, I can realign that. Mm. And that I think is super powerful. Absolutely. And you know, it's sometimes it's not super, obvious to kind of align your gym training with your higher purpose or whatever it might be. But, you know, ultimately having a stronger, more resilient mind and body is going to help you well, luckily, uh, connect. Luckily for us in our profession anyway, it's really easy to combine a gym easy. with absolutely everything that absolutely. anybody ever wants to do. <laughs> it's like you say, at the base level, there's resilience training there. There's obviously health and wellness, so, you know, you're a more productive, happier, um, concentrated mind. Yeah, 100%. You know, there's a spiritual element to it where you're flushing through emotions, and, yeah, like it, it's really easy to tie into to just about everything. And I use um, exercise as sort of the fulcrum that I'll surround everything else with. Yep. So it's like a snowball effect. Um, <laughs> Someone told me in my, um, in my mastermind 
short while ago. Your why needs to make you cry. Oh, yeah. And it's good because it's like, you know, whilst it might be a little dramatic, you want your why to be dramatic. Yeah. You want it to be, you want it to hit you here because you want it to be able to allow you to take action when your motivation is low. I think it has to make you in equal parts excited and nervous, which is sort of what you're saying. Um, like I think, yeah, there's real, there's real power in purpose and it's <coughs> underrated and it's, I've done a bit of coaching with some younger <coughs> guys. Yep. And I fucking sounded like an old fuddy-duddy, but I was like, look, honestly, <coughs> when they asked me, I was like, look, the one thing that I wish that I knew at an earlier stage is that power of purpose, the power of the drive that it can give you. Yeah. It'd be like going to Google Maps and seeing all these roads and all these destinations and all these options, but having no fucking idea of what address to put in. Yeah. I mean, sure, you might get somewhere fun and exciting, but, you know, you also might end up out of Craigie Bay. <laughs> <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with Craigie Bay. No. Sorry for anyone that lives in Craigie Bay. <laughs> And that's it. It's the first, first face that came to my mind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, sometimes I've also found that motivation is one of those things that can, can, can be high and can be low without any particular knowledge of knowing why it's happening. So sometimes just getting shit done, action breeds motivation as well. Yeah. Motivation is always fleeting. No one is ever 100% motivated all the time. So... It's, that's, that's where the model gets back to understanding like your purpose, your why behind the why. 100%. Um, yeah, so I think that's, the, in, in answer to the question, what keeps me motivated? Nothing. No, I, I don't, I'm not motivated all the time. 100%. Um, and I, the, I'd say that that's the same message that I preach to my clients, which is that's the thing that Instagram doesn't tell you. Yep. And that's the thing that you've got to understand is that no one, not even, you know, Elon Musk, richest man in the world, he's not motivated 24 7. It's not possible. It's not possible. So there's got to be other mechanisms that you can use to keep you moving in the right direction, even if it's not at the same pace as when it is that when, you, when you are really motivated. And hopefully so it gets you back to a point where you are motivated. So you were saying that your fire has kind of changed since. Having a family and, you know, yeah. from a practical standpoint and, and also a priority standpoint, like, things just change, they're more dynamic. So what do yeah. you reckon has been the biggest change and challenge since you've kind of become a dad and... Oh, um, time. Yeah, 100% time. And, and navigating that from a productivity standpoint? Well, time's finite, right? Mm-hmm. And, yeah, you've got... You've now just added you know, exponential <laughs> things to your to-do list. But I didn't manage to also add more time to my day. No. So everything just becomes more compressed. Um, and I'm doing it on essentially what I, I would term as a less, lesser budget. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I've got, I've got less, <coughs> less energy to spend because more of it's taken up with the kids or yep. know, with a lack of sleep. Um, you know, so it's stuff like purpose. It just becomes all the more um, important to keep you going on the journey. I also think it's valuable to understand that sometimes life's just shit. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's okay for life to be shit. Amen. And you can, and that you can have yourself a little pity party. And feel yep. sorry for yourself a little bit because sometimes life just sucks. <laughs> and it doesn't need to be good all the time. You know, you're actually going to hopefully learn a fair bit during that, that downtime. Yep. And utilize some of the things that we've talked about to get you back on the, on the, on the path. Like, it's just, it can be a bit of a slippery slope, the pity party, but. Well, that's it. It's like, at what yeah. point do you do you acknowledge that life is dynamic, it's full of natural highs and downs, but then at what point do you like pick yourself up and say, right, time to fucking get on with it. I think you put a time limit it. on it. If 
depending on what's happening, I'm usually like, right, this is a day long pity party. All right, <laughs> I'm gonna, you know, not worry about training, not worry about food, not worry, you know, you've still got the basic stuff that you need to do, obviously with the kids, but it's like, I'm not gonna beat myself up about not being super productive with work. Yeah. You know, and then, but tomorrow's another day, tomorrow I need to get my shit together. People are counting on me sort of thing. Or if it's worse, you know, maybe during that, one of the lockdowns, I can't remember which one, one, one of the many, um, hit me quite hard. And I took, I had a week. I, had I a remember. Week, I had a week where I was just shit. I remember, you, I, I think I saw you feeling yeah. that way. Yeah. Or at the tail end yeah, of it. Yeah, quite possibly. Well, I, life just, life just sucked. And I was like, Do you know what? It's just sucking. I yeah. focus on me, focus on the kids being okay, you know, like. Mm-hmm. Fortunately, one of the things that lockdown allowed was that time and space where you're like, oh, well, like I don't have too many other commitments, right? I can still be a good, a good enough dad. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was listening to an interesting interview, podcast with, uh, do you know Emma Murray? Emma Murray? Mm. She's uh, a high, high performance mindfulness coach in, uh, for Richmond. Yes. Yeah, 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 I do. Yeah, she was talking no, about... Not personally, but... No, no, neither do yeah. I. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But she was talking about this kind of loop that w- we all kind of find ourselves in, and she calls it the... Uh, when... What, what did she call it? She called it... When this happens, I will. Okay. It's yeah. like... When I get my holiday, I will yeah, be happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I yeah. so and so, I will then be satisfied. Yeah. Uh, my cup will be full. And it's like, I like the idea of being able to give yourself like a finite period of time, but you're, you're judging that. It's not like out of your control. It's not out of your hands because no. you're, you're finding that sweet spot between I'm acknowledging, I'm being present to the point where I'm feeling like shit. Yeah. And I'm just going to feel that out for a period of time. Then I'm just gonna kind of move on, but it's not like so many people fall into this trap of when my business makes X amount of money, I will then be happy and fulfilled. When I do this, I will then do that. But ultimately, there's no other time than now. But in saying that, there's no other t- like if if now is the time that you're choosing to have a pity party, then you're being productive, right? <laughs> well, look, the, the saying that I love the most is that yo- is the Yoda quote, right? There is no do or do not. There is no try. Yep. There is only either do or do not. And that remind that reminds me a little bit of that. It's like it's the time. The time is now. It's so <laughs> it's, um, and it's not there to waste. And I think I don't think I, don't, I wouldn't categorize pity party and as wasting it. I think it's high, it can be highly productive. Right. You know, like some of the greatest things have been discovered in these down periods. Um, you know, is it, is, it, is it Newton that discovered gravity? Was it just sitting underneath a tree? Yeah, that's it. Um, so, yeah, just chilling in the sun rather than actually being in his workshop doing all those mathematical equations. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, I think there's value in it, but time's too short, life's too short to continually have a pity party. So that's why I like the model of just putting a, Putting a time cap on it so that you don't let it run away with you. And, and what you're doing is, is you're being, you're being present, you're being conscious. Yes. And you're being, you're, you're being, for lack of a better word, down on purpose. Yeah. Well, yeah. And the key, like, the key term not, is on purpose. You're yeah. fo- you know. You just, like you said, I think what you said about being present and aware, I think is spot on. Um, like it's, whatever happens, you know, it can be as severe as a death, it can be as little as, you know, um, whatever you want to make of it, but, and those things don't always necessarily obviously happen on purpose, but you're being purposeful by acknowledging life and aware enough to have a plan. A hundred percent. Too many people are asleep at the wheel. Yep. And therein lies a lot of, a lot of people's issues. And that, and that happens in both, on both sides of the um, emotional fence. They can be asleep at the wheel when they're, they don't notice they're in a slump and then it kind of feeds on itself because there's no conscious aspect to it. Yeah. 
And they're also asleep at the wheel when wonderful, incredible things are happening and there's no conscious gratitude applied yeah, to it. Right. Yeah. And I think that's the right word is conscious. Just, yeah, just being aware. Like, why would you not analyse what you're doing? Why would you not seek to improve? 100%. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that whole sort of, uh, model doesn't make much sense to me. No, I agree. And it takes practice. Yes. Every day. Because we are used to and conditioned by the outside world to not think for ourselves. And that's where I think, you know, like meditation and journaling becomes uber important. I always, even before meditation and journaling start is try to live my life from betterment and improvement. <laughs> Know, like that Kaizen theory. Yep. I'm going to be 1% better every day. Love it. Um, <coughs> yeah, so. Yeah, it's a. Uh, <laughs> How much time you got left? Yeah, five minutes. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's talk men and women. Yep. What makes them. Unique, individual. Yeah, very much so. Look, you, are you, you mean in the training, same, training different, yeah, equal but different. Equal but the same is the perfect summation for it. Um, for anybody that wants to start counselling us, um, <laughs> very much equal but different. Like you know, my son and my daughter both treated the same as much as possible, the language around, you know, how we talk to them is the same. You know, like, I, I tr we tried very hard not to overstate the value of my daughter's looks and not to overstate the value of my son's actions and to try and have this combination of the two. And yet, both of them are completely, completely different and completely the stereotypical boy and girl. He loves fighting and wrestling and, um, you know, sports and all the rest of it. And she is obsessed <coughs> with fairies and dolls. And Who isn't? You know, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> all, that, all that stuff. Um, and that's, that's, that's fine, but it just shows that there's nature and nurture. Uh, in terms of training, uh, men, are, men are fortunate in a way. They, they're like old buses. They're, there's no hormonal shift. You know, they've got big joints. Lots of muscle mass. They really won the genetic lottery in, 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 in the gym. And why do you uh, think that's the case? Well, a higher amount of muscle mass gives you a higher set phase or metabolic rate to cost the body more to run on a daily basis. So you could eat the same burger together as a couple. It's going to take a woman twice as long to burn that same burger off in the gym. So, you know, there's that. Smaller joints means more delicate joints, uh, means higher rate of injury. You have something called acute angle, which is the angle between your hip and the knee. Yep. The hips being wider on a woman make the angle greater, which makes the risk of injury to the knee far greater. You know, so for dynamic sports, AFL, netball, they have, they have the highest rate of um, ACL injuries in sport. Yeah, right. So. It's hey man, how you, you going? just have to take that factor all of that in. And then also you're looking at the hormonal cycle. Yeah. Uh, which changes the game. Yeah. yeah the, the, the fluctuations in progesterone, testosterone, and estrogen on a monthly basis look like a fucking map of a roller coaster. When you look at it from a woman's point of view, and obviously from a man, it's pretty flat. Right? So it has a huge impact on energy, mood, um, and ability. Well, I'm interested in. Cognitively and otherwise, so yeah, all of that just has to be taken into account. No, and we should talk more about that another day. Like, uh, yeah. also very interested from like an evolutionary standpoint as well. Totally. Yeah, mate. Sick. We will do.